Hey gamers, welcome back to LA Eocta Est. Today, I'm very excited to showcase Command Modern Operations. Um, really, really fun game. I've uh, been slowly getting into it. I am fairly new at it, but this is a very insane in-depth game. It's the only game I know of that, as you buy it, it comes with a 500-page PDF manual for how to play. Basically, this is you know one of the best uh battlefield simulators and it has databases that stretch back all the way to like world war ii so you can simulate some pretty insane battles in here and the war game is just kind of off the charts so we're going to start pretty easy uh what we're, the first thing we're going to do is go click on campaigns and there's going to be a strike tutorial and in the strike tutorial uh we'll just kind of go through um kind of the evolution of of bombing uh and I think all of them will take place on the uh, F-16. All right, so we'll go ahead and start the new campaign. Um, all right, so it kind of gives us a little scenario here, which is really fun. Uh, usually, of the few scenarios I've looked at, this is kind of like you get almost like a operations order of sorts, um, kind of detailing exactly like what you're looking at. Um, and so, yeah, so basically we're just going to be going through air-to-ground bombing, and there's not going to be any air-to-air uh, -air missions today. Um, and we're just going to be focusing on bombing, because obviously that is a very important job of aircraft. All right, so for this, we're just going to be looking at, uh, yeah, the F-16. Um, and later on, I'm sure we'll do some... Uh, with other Chinese or Russian engines as well. All right, so we'll go ahead and start scenario. All right, so uh, it uh, gives us this readout. This is kind of more of the uh, order, the little briefing uh, that we're looking. So we're a colonel right now. Uh, we have 12 F-16s, uh, and we'll, we'll go through the different bombs. So you don't need to worry too much about this. Um, and we'll go ahead and enter in the scenario. All right, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to kind of check out where we are. So first off, we're in the country of Mali. Um, it looks like there's a whole bunch of enemy over this way. We have a whole bunch of reference or rally points, depending on what you want RP to be. Uh, this will likely be reference points since we're just dealing with air um, assets today. And we're going to have a blue base down here. Kind of a basics of war gaming that's fairly logical to think about, um, but doesn't hurt to explain, is that there's usually a blue force and a red force. And blue force is going to be friendly assets, and the blue force is who you are playing as. And the red force will be simulated enemy assets. Uh, this is true for almost all war gaming and a lot of, a lot of uh, cyber exercises as well. All right, so we'll go ahead and look at... Uh, the blue base and we can see once we select it that the blue base we have one single unit airfield so we have two runways if we go into aircraft operations we're going to get a pop-up here and this pop-up is going to detail all of the different planes that we're going to have launching out of this blue base all right we're going to get a whole bunch of readouts here we can see that we have 12 f-16s and the really cool thing about Command Modern Operations is if at any point you're unsure about what something does, you can go ahead and click on it and it'll bring up the database. And this is kind of everything that you need to know about the equipment that you're working with. And again, there are thousands and thousands of equipment inside of the software. It's really, really incredible. All right, but we don't need to worry too much about that for now. Let's go ahead and look around and kind of see what our enemy will be working with. Like I said, we are in the country of Mali, so we're kind of on this this uh, this border between the southwestern part of Mali and the Saharan part of Mali. Uh, almost like ninety percent of the Mali population lives down this way, and only about ten percent uh, lives up here. Uh, there is Timbuktu. Um, yeah, I don't know why it has it all the way up there. Timbuktu is definitely down here. And you can see that there's a few different uh, dried lakes in the kind of bird's eye view that we have going on here. Uh, very similar to Lake Chad, 
which is uh, over here, right there, um, that uh, a lot of these areas have been experiencing uh, drying out lakes, which is, you know, obviously in the Sahara Desert is very difficult to come by and leading to a lot of water politics and combat, which is very interesting to look at. Um, there is the Niger River that stretches through Mali, and you kind of see it here. And then, if I remember correctly, it kind of runs down through this way. I guess you can kind of see outline there. Um, again, water politics are very important. Uh, Mali itself sits on a huge uh, shelf. It's the West African Creighton, and there's like a whole bunch of uh, mining and geological expeditions that launched there here so you know nerds that like rocks can go go look at it um i know recently there has been conflict between the southwestern government of mali because a lot of their um government is is located down this way uh and kind of uh uh i think it's mnla is up this way uh and mnla is also allied with Algeria, they've done some operations together, um, which the southern government definitely does does not like. Um, There's a hostage situation a while back. Uh, yeah, and other than that, I think that's most of the stuff that we need to get started here. Um, and I think we are ready to go ahead and launch our first aircraft. All right. So we're going to go ahead and launch our first aircraft. And the first thing that we're going to look at is our first aircraft is called Strike Number One. And you will see that it's currently parked. All right. The time to ready is it's already ready to go. So we could launch it. And it has a loadout. It has a few different things on here. So we'll go ahead and click. And is this just the F-16 page? It is just the F-16 page. Okay. My apologies. We'll go ahead and click, and then we're going to just launch individually. So that was a right click, and then that brought up the menu. And you can see it's now taxiing to take off, which will take about two minutes. All right. Oh, well, I'm doxing myself. You can guys see that I need to update my GPU here. <laughs> All right. So we're back in the menu. If you look, it currently says it's uh, 7 a.m., 07 local time. So the the uh, excuse me, the time is not currently ticking. So we're currently on pause right now, as you can see by this play sign up here. So if I were to hit this, we would start the engagement, and our aircraft that we're is taxiing to takeoff would be ready in two minutes. Um, a neat little tip. So we'll go ahead and hit play, and we'll see that it progresses in real time. If we want this to speed up. We can go ahead and hit the plus key on the keyboard or the addition. And you can see that it kind of puts it into double time here. All right. So uh, the game was just paused. And we can see that there's a minute 46 seconds left until the taxi take off. All right. So once we get uh, once we get strike one to take off, we'll go ahead and look at its payload and see what we're looking at. All right, so again, we're back in the menu. The game was just paused because of a pop-up, but we're gonna have to hit play again. And again, we're advancing at two times speed. And if ever uh, this gets too fast for you, you can go ahead and hit the enter key. And immediately after hitting the enter key, you'll go back to real-time advancement. All right, for the sake of this, I'm gonna speed it up. And you should see, at some point, we'll check on our aircraft operations. Okay, still 40 seconds to taxi into takeoff, and then it'll take a minute or two for the, uh, for the F-16 to go ahead and launch out of this airfield. So while it's doing that, let's go ahead and look at our target number one. Our target number one is going to be the closest, and we can see that it is a building guard post. All right, and we'll go ahead and click on it. This is obviously something that the uh, the designer of this, oh, and our aircraft launched. So we'll go ahead and pause so we can look at this, that the designer of this encounter put in here to be you know relatively easy to hit. And we can see all of its statistics by clicking on it. So it has 25 damage points. So we're, we will remember that when we go and look at our bomb. And it's a 20 by 20 area, so 400 square meters to hit. All right. And we can see that it has, it has light armor. 
So this will be a pretty easy takeout. However, on our first F-16, we are not going to be using very advanced uh, systems. In fact, we will look at what it will be using here first. So again, we're kind of progressing throughout the era, the eras of strategic bombing. So strike number one has been launched, and we can tell that it's been launched by, you know, it has its own designation now. And when we when we just left click on it, it brings up this menu over here, and we can tell exactly, you know, what kind of F sixteen it is, what its course is looking like, what its altitude is, and we can go ahead and adjust some minutia of details down below. What we're going to do, again, we're focusing on bombing, so we're going to hit a the F1 key, okay? And the F1 key, you can see, brings up this little crosshair. And we will go ahead and select target one with the left click right there. All right. So now that we've done that, um, did I mess something up? Okay, there we go. Um. So this menu should have popped up. Uh, another thing that you can do is if there is a multitude of targets that you want to hit, go ahead and hit Shift F1. So that's what I did to get the menu to pop up there. So Shift F1 brings up this little crosshair, and then you can kind of drag it over the area you want to hit, and this, this will pop up. All right. So now that we see we've brought up a menu, we're going to designate weapon allocations for strike number one, which is the first F-16 that we just launched, against target number one, which if you remember was that small little 20 by 20 building. All right. So we can see we have two different weapon systems here. We have a 20 millimeter cannon, and we're going to have six 500 pound uh, LDGP bombs. All right. So if you guys don't know what that is, uh, this is a very, very old bomb and let's see if we can click on it over here also we can bring up this menu it can we can see all about it all right so um i mean this was designed probably in the 50s i'd, I'd have to guess um and we're basically going to have to be right on top of them uh in order to launch these bombs because there's nothing there's nothing smart about them right so this is an example of a quote-unquote dumb bomb versus a smart bomb uh just like a dumb phone like a like an old nokia um it's going to hit like a brick but it is definitely you know it is not it's not smart it's not going to track to its target if there's a huge gust of wind it's going to be blown off course all right so what i would be expecting to see with us dropping this payload is that we're we're probably going to miss unless we adjust some altitude so let's uh, go ahead and look at the general data for it. So remember, uh, the little shack only had a you know minuscule amount of uh, hit points, and we can see on here that uh, there's it's going to deal one uh, one thirty damage points, which will be plenty to knock out that shack if we're able to hit that four hundred square meters. All right, we're going to look at the uh, surface. Uh, the land probability is going to be 99%. That is not the chance that it hits its target. That's the chance that it's going to hit the ground. <laughs> uh, and I assume that 1% will be, you know, possible malfunction. You can see that the range against anti-surface, which we'll be going against, is only one nautical mile. So like I said, this, this drop is going to have to be damn near on top of them. All right. Okay, so that's that's enough about the um, oh, uh, and then it's low drag general purpose bomb is what uh, LDGP stands for. So this is what we're going to be using against target one. All right. So the way that we're going to designate these six uh, these six dumb bombs on top of target one is to click on strike one, click left click on target one. This will all be left click, left click on target one, and then left click on the 500 pound dumb bombs, okay? Now we want to tell the computer how many we want to, how many of these bombs we want to de designate to a target. Because most of the time when we're playing this game and the examples we'll get into later, you're gonna be hitting multiple targets with one, with one go. However, we just wanna see, this is kind of like, you know, this a little bombing run here. We're just gonna drop all of these bombs onto target one. So what we're going to do 
is allocate all weapons of this type to target. And we can see when we left clicked this bottom most uh, selection that now if we go over and look in the right column, we can see that strike one has been allocated six 500 pound bombs. Mark 82, uh, if I remember correctly, is um, the uh, the poundage of the bomb. Uh, Mark 81 was was really popular in Vietnam. We don't really use them anymore. Mark 82 is kind of a lower yield because once you get up to like Mark 83 and Mark 84, that's when you're dealing with like I think I think Mark 83 is a thousand. Mark 84 is is a ton, two thousand pounds. Um, which that that has a lot of collateral damage. <laughs> so if there's anything in the vicinity, we're probably won't be using you know Mark 83, Mark 84. Um, all right, so we've allocated that, and now we can go ahead and exit out of this menu. And again, we come back into uh, into the war gaming here, and we can see that we're currently paused because the time is not continuing. So we'll go ahead and hit play. And you can see that now strike one has adjusted its course, adjusted its altitude, and is now on course to go drop all of its bombs onto target one. Obviously, we're going to have to wait here for a little bit. All right. Um, af at this point, the rest is pretty much up to the pilot. Um, and like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if all of these bombs miss. <laughs> um, okay. So like I said, uh, you can do hit the plus key to go ahead and speed up the strike. Um, be careful not to go two in because I do believe it's exponential in it. Uh, it gets really fast, really quick. Um, all right. Awesome. Yeah, we're looking good. So I'm very curious how this is going to go. You'll be able to see the bombs once uh, they're launched and dropped by strike one. So we'll be able to see kind of where they hit around target one. All right, here he comes. Let's see if he earns his paycheck. <laughs> like I said, we'll be very lucky to get a hit off here. However, if we do get a hit, this is this is probably going to die. Because again, it had very few health. Once the payload has been dropped, you're, you'll probably see strike one veer off course. But like I said, we're going to have to be right on top of them. All right, there it goes. Now strike one's heading back. Okay. Um, it looks like we did score a hit, which is awesome. Uh, a lot of times you'll see that um, wind has blown the bombs off course. The, the approach was too fast. The approach was too slow. A variety of factors can affect dumb bombs. Um, and it just so happens that this time everything went right. So we were good to go. All right. So we'll go ahead and bring strike one. Right now, its uh, destination is to return to base. So uh, if we remember, it still had the uh, the 22 millimeter cannon. Um, but right now, it's just uh, return to base RTB uh, for short. So while it's doing that, let's go ahead and look at what other aircraft we have inside a blue base. So again, we'll go up here, aircraft operations, alternatively, the F6 key. Uh, it's currently parked, so it looks like we're going to have to get the uh, just, I think the designer just intended for strike one to be, you know, there and back before we launch strike two, just so we don't get ahead of ourselves. All right. Maybe by this point, we'll be able to. All right, so strike two is ready. We're going and paused up here. You can see that now since we launched strike one, we only have 11 left in this airbase. And strike two is parked. And we can see that it has a variety of different uh, payloads as well. So we'll, we'll go ahead and click launch individually. And in about two minutes, it'll be taxied and ready to take off. All right, so we'll continue having uh, strike one fly back and strike two will be ready to take off. All right. Go ahead and hit play again. 
And here shortly, we'll see Strike 2 come off the runway. And we can go ahead and designate. There it is. What's up, Strike 2? All right. So you can see that it's currently just circling around the airbase. All right, because we haven't given it a mission yet. So we're going to go ahead and give it a mission. We're going to hit Shift F1. And we're going to select these two targets right here. All right. And so now we have two targets. It's going to get a little bit more difficult. However, we do have JDAMs, which is awesome. Not awesome for the American taxpayer because these things are crazy expensive. However, this I it looks like this is literally just a JDAM affixed to the same bomb we just used. So we're going to we're going to be able to see that um that this uh, joint direct attack munition with uh, GPS capability is going to focus in on these areas and just kind of cruise right into both of these targets. So instead of using six bombs, we're able to just use two. All right, and then we'll, we can see how much damage they do as well. Um, I think it'll be very similar. Do, do, do. Yeah, very similar damage type. All right, and we can see that the range has extended dramatically. Remember, we were at one nautical mile before. Now we're all the way out to 13 nautical miles. Also, something to consider is the launch altitude. We can see that we have this huge range of 2,000 feet to 65,000 feet. Variety of altitudes we can launch this from. All right, so now we're dealing with two targets. Okay. So we have these two. So we're going to have to allocate Strike 2's payloads to both of these targets in order for Strike 2 to go hit it. So first, we're going to left-click on Strike 2, left-click on the first target 2, left-click on the JDAM we want to use. And now we don't want to send both of the JDAMs at one target. So we're not going to hit allocate all weapons of this type to one target. What we're going to do is we're going to use this top selection, allocate weapons to selected target. So we have two, two JDAMs, so we're going to allocate only one of the JDAMs to this target. And we'll go ahead and left click. And you can see that it has been allocated one JDAM to this target. Now we'll go back, hit that second target. You see that the second target does not have any JDAM sent to it yet. And we'll go ahead and allocate another JDAM to target number two. So now if we look in this right menu, you can see that both targets have a JDAM allocated to it. All right, so we'll go ahead and exit out, and we'll go ahead and hit play. All right, so Strike 2 got its mission. Strike 2 is now on the way, and we're going to see it travel over that way. They're going to have a nice kiss. Oh, <laughs> and uh, all right, so Strike 1 is currently in a return to base status. Strike 2 is going out, and we can see that sh there is uh, circles going around strike one and strike two. So you might be wondering what this means. Um, unfortunately, I am colorblind, so the colors don't really help me a whole bunch uh, for this, but uh, there's going to be two circles around it. One is going to indicate air to air, and one's going to indicate air to surface. If you ever want to change these circles, you can go to map settings, and you can display or not display all of these. All right. So if we didn't want to display air weapons, we could turn that off. And we'll go ahead and do that just to showcase it. And now we're not displaying air weapons anymore. We're only displaying uh, air to ground weapons. And you can see that we have this 15 nautical mile radius because we're carrying the JDAMs, the one, one nautical mile to 15 nautical miles, whereas Strike 1 had the dumb bombs. They only have the one nautical mile radius. All right, hopefully that's making sense. We'll go ahead and hit play again. All right, strike two is looking good. All right, I don't want to speed it up again just in case we uh, go way too fast. But yeah, we're looking nice. So what you'll likely see as target one of these targets comes into view, as soon as it hits this uh, this radius right here, you'll see a JDAM launch, and hopefully we will see that in a second. All 
All right. Let's go time. Warheads on foreheads. There we go. There's the first JDAM going into target. As uh sorry about that. Uh there's a little pop-up. Um all right, so both JDAMs have been launched, and we can see that one JDAM hit, and we'll see if the other one destroys. Oh man, just barely destroys. So it missed a tiny bit. Just barely. But that's all right. Uh, that's a that's an okay display. Um, I'm sure they tried their best. <laughs> so yeah, we'll go ahead and have strike two. Uh, go back to base. We could have them assign. Remember, they also have the 22 millimeter cannon. Uh, we could have them decide to do some strafing lifts as well through here. Uh, but we'll save that for one of the other one of the other strikes as well. All right. So let's see if strike three is indeed parked and they are ready to go. So we'll go ahead and launch strike three. So they will be taxiing and ready to take off. Um, all right. So now that strike three is airborne and we want to um, show you guys how to do a strafing run with the cannon, we're going to have to do a few adjustments in the doctrine. Okay. So if you go to game, and you go to uh yeah side side doctrine right here um it looks like the shortcut is control shift f9 it'll bring up this menu here the right column is going to have air operations and uh most of the way down we're going to see ag strafing gun which will be right here and we'll go ahead and select that to yes so now strafing is allowed, um, and we can go ahead and close the doctrine window. All right, so let's talk about what uh, targets strike three is going to hit. We can see that uh, these two targets are uh, our tanks. So if we get this uh, pull out from here, you're just able to tell that from the, um, I forget exactly what this call it. it's it's like a nato or naval designation of symbologies here but we're able to tell that this is a this is an armor platoon yes armor platoon of scorpions and for some reason the arab world loves these things um and so this will be a moving target so some some things to note about um about these moving targets one of them uh is that there's the number three right here that's because inside of an armored platoon, um, there are going to be three light scorpion tanks. So if we just assign, you know, one very low yield uh, bomb and, you know, only targeted at one of them, there's still going to be two light tanks alive. So in order to take out this entire platoon, we're going to need, you know, three separate payloads, right? However, we're going to be demonstrating some strafing runs, so hopefully we can get a few of them in one go. All right, uh, once we get three launched, which hasn't happened quite yet. So we'll go ahead and advance the time a little bit and wait for strike three to launch. There's strike three. All right, we'll go ahead and pause. And we will give strike three now the designation. Again, I'm pressing Shift F1. That brings up the crosshair, and we'll go ahead and select all of these units here. All right, so what we can see is that we do have an anti-tank munition, which is awesome. Um, so what we're going to do is we are going to... We also have you know the 20 millimeter cannon as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on Strike 3. We're going to allocate one uh, anti-tank to the first one, one anti-tank to the second one. And then for the other five bursts, we'll go ahead and allocate. So we have five to work with, so we'll just allocate three to the first one and two to the second one. And that should be that should use up all of our ammunition. All right. So if we want to look at this uh this anti-tank uh, that we're looking at little bomblets um, because it is a bomblet you could see maybe a multitude of damage done so each of these warheads 
are doing 40 damage. So this will spread out. Um, do some area effect type deal. All right. So we'll go ahead and exit out of that. And strike three now has, ex has its designation. So we'll go ahead and launch. And strike three is, is on the course. Strike two is coming back. All right, we are looking good. Uh, as we can see, very similar radius to uh, strike two, about 15 nautical miles. And there they go. They're going to kiss. Mwah. <laughs> All right. So as we're looking at strike three, uh, we designated strike three and we're going to see what kind of devastating effect they have on these tank, these two tank platoons. We're going to go ahead and look at target four. So target four is this cluster, a whole bunch of different buildings right here. And target four is going to uh, be used by strike strike four and it's going to be a very modern version of bomb uh, this bomb that strike four is going to use was designed for coin which is counterinsurgency operations um, and it is going to be very accurate so we'll see in a second uh, all the capabilities that strike four has uh, which they should be ready to launch somewhat soon Okay, somewhat soon. And we'll just keep playing this. And again, we're about at 15 times normal speed right now. So you kind of forget how big this area <laughs> that we're dealing in right here is. All right, we don't want to speed it up too much. Uh, we'll go ahead and look now at this target. You can see that it sustained heavy damage from that bombing. So even though we didn't we didn't fully destroy the aircraft shelter, what we did probably do is destroy the aircraft inside of there, which is just what we wanted to do. All right. Um, okay, so we'll go ahead and keep playing. And I'm actually curious if this pilot is going to decide to launch the anti-tank bomblets and then do the strafing run or do them together. So we'll see what he does here. Okay, looks like he's... Okay, he launched the two bomblets. Okay, did he do a strafing run? I didn't see it. All right, so he got most of those. So what we're going to do now is we're going to highlight strike three. We're going to pause it real quick. And we're going to hit U. And U is going to basically unassign him from a mission. And we're going to hit shift F1 again. And we still have these uh, rounds as well. So what we're going to do, since we destroyed one platoon, didn't fully destroy another platoon, you can see that there's still two tanks left in this platoon. That we're going to highlight these. And we're going to go to this uh, 20 millimeter cannon. And we're just going to allocate all the um, ammunition that we have left to there. And what we should see is Strike 3 will uh, turn around and go back for a strafe run. Uh, sometimes this doesn't work. I'm not quite sure. So we'll have to see if he actually does it. Okay, awesome. That's what he's doing. All right. And probably at this point, we can launch Strike 4. You can see there's a lot of stuff to juggle. Strike 4 is ready. We'll go ahead and launch it. Again, much smaller radius, so we're going to have to get in close for the strafing run. Oh, like there for a second. Nice, we got a hit off. Only one, uh, one tank left, and we got it. All right, so now strike three. You can see what the pilot has started to do is just circle around this area. And we don't want to waste American taxpayer dollars, right? The military has never done that. So we're, what we're going to do is just going to send him on a return to base mission. And he'll turn around, fly back to base. We do already have Strike 4 out. So we're going to go ahead and select Strike 4. 
we're going to shift F1 and target all of these buildings that we have over here, if you remember. And we're going to have eight of these uh, advanced bombs. Remember, this this bomb was developed in uh, about 2006 for counterinsurgency operations. All right, so uh, let's divvy up uh, these bombs between all the targets. Let's just do one at each and uh, and see how that does. And if we miss any, that'll be okay. We can go back through for a strafing run, and we'll have two weapons in reserve for any buildings that were not taken out. All right. So their, their strike four is ready to go. And strike four is off. And you can see how much longer range we have now. Let's actually go ahead and take a look at that. Uh, there we go. Right, so that's the munition we're going to be dealing with here. Uh, pretty decent damage, and uh, you can see that range here up to 60 nautical miles. Again, pretty much any altitude as well. All right. Uh, all right, let's continue with Strike 4. Let's see how they do. They didn't kiss this time. So again, right when we see uh, these targets come into range, we'll see a launch, most likely. All right, strike four, first one away. And there's all six are away. So you can see he's starting to turn around. We would like him, yeah, he's just going to be circling right now just to see how his munitions do. And I'm curious as well. In the meantime, we can probably launch strike five. And you guys are getting the idea now. We're just launching one at a time just to see the evolution of munitions. And we'll go ahead and hit play. And while these missiles hit, Strike 5 will get launched up. Yikes. Did not do very well there. All right, I wonder why that is. Anyway, we're going to use the rest of our ammo here. to take out this entire village. All right, good enough for me. And is he gonna do a strafing run? Okay, he is not wanting to do a strafing run. That's all right. We got strike five launched, awesome. So we're going to, again, shift F1, highlight these two units. We have two target, target uh, Two targets here, and these are going to be moving, as you can see, slightly moving. All right, so again, we're going to be allocating uh, these Mavericks with IR sensors on them. All right, so we'll go ahead and read a little bit about this. Uh, pretty nice range here. Um, and... Let's see, we're, we're looking at damage, 61 damage. Okay, awesome. And again, they're using IR as kind of a seeking weapon. Okay, so we'll assign one missile to each target. And we'll go ahead and send target five on its merry way. Yeah, these just really did not do well. No damage, no damage. Crazy. Huh. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure why that happened. I'll, I'll have to look uh, a little bit closer. It could be a. Uh, this looks like we switched to day daytime here. Uh, it could be a a altitude issue. Uh, I'm not too sure. 
Okay. All right. Let's see if we can get strike six. Awesome. So strike six will get launched up. Strike four is on a return to base. And I'm excited for strike six to show you guys what we're working with here. All right, so strike six will be all the way over there. Oh, so shift F1. We got to select strike six, shift F1. We'll select those two targets. Awesome. So now we're looking at some serious payloads. Um, each of these is is like a million dollars, um, which is which is awesome. Look at that. Thank you, Lockheed. Very cool. Um, you can see that it's going to have up to 215 nautical mile range. Absolutely insane. It's also going to use imaging IR to seek uh, and is going to deal a whopping 207 damage. Um, yeah, pretty insane. Uh, does it have any additions onto it? I don't think so. I think we might get that in, in uh, Strike 7. All right, so we'll go ahead and allocate each of these one missile to each target, and we will see how quickly these are taken out. So th look at this range. All, it's stretching all the way out there. Strike 5 isn't even going to get to its target before Strike 6 is going to launch its missiles. All right. Um, All right, so yeah, awesome. Ah, okay. I think we did here. We'll go ahead and do this. The pop up is um yeah, we do have an option here to plot the course of the missile, which is awesome. So we can have it oh, whoops. Okay, um, I'm not actually quite sure that how that works yet, so we'll have to come back to that. Okay, that's all right. They're gonna they're gonna get launched and do their job anyway. So strike six has just insane range. Ah, uh, there, there goes the damage. I was wondering. Okay, so they launched both of theirs. And that'll take a minute to get there. And I'm curious how Strike 5 is going to do as well. We'll go ahead and launch Strike 7 while we're at it. Yeah, these really aren't moving too much, are they? They're really not moving at all. <laughs> I think they're uh I don't know, maybe that maybe that's simulated. But yeah. Let's see if this IR IR sensor can find the two. Yeah, I got both of them for sure. Awesome. Yay, it found the Toyota Tacoma. with the 50 cal mounted in the back, presumably. 